Yes, and in today's episode, we are looking at templates. I mean, we've all been there. We've all played Gaslands and had that turn where it's like, yeah, I'm going to drop my oil slick or my napalm, and yeah, it's going to be sick. So you move your cars on, and then, and then that's it. You've put your templates down, but you don't have another large template or another small template. And you go, well, well, I've still got, you know, ammunition for my droppers and I don't want to wait for the, the opponent's vehicle to come along and be like, toot, toot, and, and get tied up in them. So, so what am I to do? Well, yes, you could just buy more templates or get some card and cut it out and, you know, make some, some ghetto ones. But what if today we looked at making some really quick and really easy templates out of things that you might have lying around the house, as well as bits in your bits box that might otherwise just get thrown away or be unloved. So that is today's episode. We're going to look at, you know, how to make napalm and oil slicks and smoke and cow traps and mines and, and just all that fun stuff. But we're also going to look at the different techniques involved in each of those, because I think a lot of the time it's easy to go, okay, I'm going to make an oil slick. Here's my one trick for doing oil slicks, and that's it, and I'll use that forever until the day I die. And it's like, no, there's so many other ways of doing these things. So let's look at that today. But I want to point out, just before we jump into it, this isn't going to be a A, B, C, D, da, 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 da for each one. No, this video is going to be separated into two parts. So, Well, in, in the same video, but two parts. The first part will be all of the builds that we can do before we paint the base. So what do I mean? I mean getting the spray can out and spraying the whole template. So all the builds where all the construction is done before we put any paint on it. And then the second part towards the end of the video will be all the builds where we'll have the template and we'll have already textured it and detailed it and like dry brushed the sand on it to make it look really good. And then you put the extra little bits on afterwards. So that's that's the plan because there's looking at the different techniques before I started recording. There are there are a variety that require the bases to be unpainted and some that require the bases to be pre-painted. So yeah, let's just jump straight into this. Okay, so let's get started. So easiest way to make these templates is going to be to take some plastic card if you have any lying around, in this case about a mil thick. You want it relatively tough. I mean the templates themselves for Gaslands are like two mil thick. So, But yeah, just put that down and draw around it with a pencil and then we'll start cutting that out. But you might say, James, I don't have any plastic card, so this is unfair. You're, you're leaving us out. Do not panic, boys and girls, because we are also doing a cardboard flavoured set of templates today. So in this case, a Whiskers food box. I'm going to be using that cardboard. And same again, we're just going to draw around that with a pen. Um, you can get quite a lot of templates out of like one or two pieces of card or plastic card. So... You know, just make as many as you think you need. And bonus, this is the exact sort of same step you would do for making terrain. So if you're doing any terrain building, I mean, they're virtually the same. Like if you're doing like an oil pit that like your enemies could fall into or like a nuclear wasty sludge for the enemy cars to drive into. Like it's the same for terrain as well as dropped, but... All right, so we're cutting them out with a pair of scissors, and because this is quite a, a nice repetitive task, allow me to segue ever so effortlessly into talking about uh, something else you guys can help me with, which is my sister is just starting up an Etsy page. Now, I know this is completely unrelated to Gaslands and Mad Max toy cars, but if you want to check out her page, it's called Lastic Lovelies over on Etsy. Uh, right now she's only got two things that she's um, making to sell. Uh, she does these Magikarp crochet hats as well as Secret Skull Cowls. Now these are both handmade items that she crochets herself out of wool. So if you do order anything from her, you can choose you can choose anything. You choose your favourite colour, you can choose the the kind of wool that's used, you know, she's 
she's a very accommodating person at the end of the day when it comes to her craft so you know if you fancy like some pokemon related apparel or if you fancy the skull cow which i gotta say i think is super cool because at first you look at it you go oh it's just a nice scarf or it's a nice face warmer but it's actually made up of tiny individually crocheted skulls <laughs> which at a glance isn't apparent but when you get up close and personal with it they look super dope look at those and can you imagine having this in like black or the white one the white one looks really good as well so so yeah if you guys want to help you know my sister out and and you want to support the channel by all means go ahead and check out her etsy page which is elastic lovelies and just while I use a pair of scissors to cut out the plastic card templates, which, by the way, if the plastic card is like a mil thick, yeah, you can just do it with a pair of scissors. Like, don't don't stress. Just use scissors. It makes life so much easier. Um, I thought I'd just talk about some of the different uh, people in the Gaslands community that have helped inspire this video, because there are so many absolutely rock solid ideas for doing different dropped weapon templates. You know, John Montgomery has done some absolutely brilliant templates that are so simple, and we're going to be recreating some of those effects here today, um, as well as Wayne Peters with his clear acrylic templates, which means they'd be ideal to go on any surface, regardless of if it's an inner city brawl or out in the nuclear radiated wasteland. Um, with 3D printed caltrops. Like, I think that's an absolutely rock solid use of a 3D printer because caltrops can be one of the hardest things. You will see today some of my workarounds because it can be hard to make a realistic looking caltrop at this scale. Okay, so you've got your templates cut up and ready to go. So you're basically there at this point. I mean, you could just write on them oil, mines, smoke and there you go just stick them on the table i'm sure no one would mind but um we're gonna we're gonna take things a bit more three-dimensional with ours um you might want to check with your plastic templates that they're sort of all roughly the same size using a file you can kind of bring any that are a bit too wide or not quite smooth enough you can just just bring them all down the cardboard ones not so much but Hey, it's whatever works. I mean, if you're playing an official tournament play, I'm sure you can't. But... The easiest way to make cow drops, bar none, is using sprue. So we're not actually using the main body of the sprue for this technique. We're actually using the little nubby bits that used to connect to, you know, your various warhammer and whatever um, parts. So it's the little little spiky bit that sort of pokes outwards. You know, you, you tend to get it caught on things as you're trying to store them. That's what we're going to be using to make this easiest most basic caltrop like bar none i i think you'd have to work hard to not be able to pull this off because you just snip some bits of sprue off and then it's as simple as just gluing them to the base one at a time which i know might seem a bit tedious but it's you know it's it's such a basic simple technique i mean anyone anyone can do this you need you have to have zero talent in order to be able to do this like it's not this is not one of the tricky ones okay guys so just snip off bits of sprue stick it to a one of your plastic templates and then let's paint this up now something you'll notice as this video goes on i'm using different basing methods in this case i'm using sand and pva and then painting over the top of that i'm skipping the majority of the painting for this video just because it's the physical techniques that i think are the most important in this case it's not the prettiest of caltrops and it can be a bit confusing at a distance but it works you know this is a very simple technique and it's great for beginners so let's try something a bit bit more advanced, something that requires a bit of recycling. So from cutting all the templates with a pair of scissors, we have all these wonderful little twisty offcuts. Now to store these, ideally we need to cut off any really thin areas or spiky areas. And just keep the, the big sort of plate areas as, as scraps for other builds. But these little twisty bits that might otherwise be thrown away why don't we try and make some caltrops out of these? 
now the shapes are completely unpredictable you know you can't you can't say to yourself well i know exactly how these are going to look because it's made out of literal rubbish so in this case i'm going for a very basic like two U's connected together to create a tripod with a little bit of a, a hooked spike coming out but you'll see what i mean in a minute so there you go so if we're just making a bunch of these this is a real simple form of caltrop that is bigger than the sprue one and i think a lot better looking than the sprue one and it helps you sort out your uh, your scrap plastics which is always important so always keep it in a box and gluing it to the base is as simple as gluing plastic card to anything else. Just a couple of drops on the points and then stick it down with the little spiky blade poking in the direction of the thing you want to poke. And there you go. So let's, uh, let's get some sand on this. Let's paint it up and then see what this looks like finished. So again, this is super easy and I like to think this is super effective. I mean, at the end of the day, from a distance, you can at least tell what this one is compared to the sprue one. But it doesn't take that much more effort to make. And scrap plastic is something that I think everyone in this hobby has at this point. So for the third one, I thought, why not use some good old bits from our wonderful sponsor, Camsel Designs. In this case, I'm using the police spike trap bits that come from the interceptor kit, and I'm using some of these lovely little traffic cones. And that's mainly because, looking at it, I think if I just stick these two flat bits of 3D printed filament to template it's just going to be too flat and too sort of boring to look at you need something to lift it up and and make it a bit more you know exciting you know cars go into it it's not just like it's sat on the template so a bit of super glue on the back of the uh of the strip there and on it goes onto the template but you can see what i mean about it being flat like that's that's almost as as textured as just sand you know <laughs> I did play with the idea of putting this little police barricade on there as well, but I felt that would take away from the actual strip effect. Now, painting these up, I tried really hard to make those strips stand out, but they're so, so sort of flat, and they're detailed, but they're just not that detailed. Fran, I love you, but we got to do something about these stinger strips. I mean, they look okay, but hey-ho. Okay, so mines. Mines are so easy, but I did not come up with this technique. No, if you enjoy this tutorial, you need to check out the Dice Mechanic Games Auto Kill little tutorial repository they've got on their website and their Facebook page, because this is one of their techniques, and it's so good. Like I, I'm not doing mines really any other way. Like this is it for me because it's so effective, and it makes use of all these awful cheapo wheels that some some toy cars come with. So you may have your individual wheels, but if you stick them on the base as they are right now, they're just going to roll off. It's not going to look good. So you need to trim the little nub off the back. Now something the Dice Mechanic Games guys don't do is they don't put a little trigger mechanism in the middle, which, you know, as you tread on the landmine or drive over it, would actually activate it. So I'm using a bit of plastic rod that, you know, roughly fits, and just gluing that in there. Because the thing is, when you look at sort of landmines in real life, they come in all shapes and sizes. So there's nothing to say, you know, they couldn't be some with like these pattern designs on them. As well as the fact that the wheels already have that nice big disc shape. So they're pretty much just ready to go. Yeah, I bet you never thought you'd turn wheels into landmines by watching this channel. But it, it makes use of a part that otherwise might just be thrown away or turned into tyre barricades, and we've all made so many tyre barricades at this point. Well, I come to think of it, I haven't done any on this channel. Yeah. But yeah, just stick them to the base, and away we go. But uh, the, I'll, I'll say this now, because of how universal this trick is, you know, it looks great when it's based and then painted, but it also works for the post-paint after the template's been done. 
So for that reason, I'm just lumping all the mines together at this one point in the video. I actually used a bit of uh, Games Workshop's uh, Agrellan Earth there for the uh, crackle effect. And on the plastic card base, it's, it's actually pretty tough. I, I'm really happy with these mines, to be fair. But here you can see on the uh, on the cheapo post paint uh, cardboard base, it's yeah, it's the same effect. So, so yeah, you, I can't knock them. They did a great technique. Something I wanted to try though, using yet again cancel design parts, was to make mines using these little axles that uh, Fran sells on the website. Because I received a load of these from the very first review I did for him. Um, and looking at them, they've got that same kind of rounded body that the, uh, the anti-tank mines have that we've just made. So if I just snip off the, uh, the axles either side, then there you go. Because it's, it's nice. I think one of the keys of this game is you've got to have a bit of variety. Not all weapons look the same and not all mines and hazards would look the same. And you've got to remember, these are dropped mines as well. If if we're doing like a, a bit of terrain, we could have, you know, that little cartoony sign with the, like, danger minefield and little skull and crossbones on it. Okay, so oil, glue traps, and to a certain degree, napalm. Oldest trick in the book. Yes, we're using a hot glue gun. That's right. I am now like every other craft YouTuber on the planet because I'm using a hot glue gun. I mean, come on. This isn't exactly groundbreaking stuff, isn't it? It's like, oh, I need to make a liquidy looking effect. What can I do that's really easy and cheap and effective? Hot glue gun. Just just hot glue gun my life. Um but I found if you use like a, a lollipop stick or a popsicle stick, you can kind of flatten the glue out so you don't have to have that streaky look. I suppose at this point I should really talk about, seeing as you've already seen it a few times, how I base these these templates. So using some PVA, I am just dabbing it on around the edges. In this case, the uh, the oil oil slick, the oil hazard. And then once that's in place, I'm using the sand and I'm just sprinkling that over the top. Now, this isn't craft sand or anything like that. This is sand that I got from a seaside, a undisclosed location here in the UK. I'm sure that goes against multiple different laws regarding taking bits of the earth with you. But you know what? It's sand. It's not like we're going to run out of that anytime soon. But here is the finished result, and i got to say, for something that's just hot glue on plastic, I'm really happy with it. Like, it, everything about it just worked. Like, I've not made any of these before. This this video isn't, ah oh, yes, 10 years of experience making templates. No, 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 this is all brand new to me, as is for you guys. So, so yeah, I, I was super stoked. And i got to say, I'm going to base things with sand from now on. Because sawdust, it's cheap and dirty, but it is not nearly as good. Like, I much prefer this. Alright, let's get into this nuclear waste hazard. So there's, you know, some pretty obvious ways of how to do a glue template weapon. And you could just, you know, texture your base, paint it, and then splat some hot glue on top and call it a day. But for the for the pre-paint one where I was going to glue everything down and then spray it black and then paint over the top, I thought, well, why not try and create some like real sticky looking textures like tires had tried to like, you know, tread through it. And you could see like the pattern on the tire going through the glue before getting, you know, terribly stuck. Well, um, I had a bit of an experiment with that. And as you can see yeah, uh, that didn't work so well. <laughs> now, sure, maybe if I waited for the hot glue to dry a bit first, I may have been able to push the the tread texture in. But you know, the hot glue straight from the gun, it just it just sticks to the tire and and just drags with it. It it acts like glue, strangely enough. <laughs> but with that in mind, I thought, well, why not? Why not actually model this hazard like a tyre has, you know, someone tried to drive through it and their wheel came off and got stuck in the glue. I thought that would be kind of neat. 
So I took this uh, Zynga Industries uh, tire and uh, stuck that in. Now painting this was an absolute blast. I honestly thought I would hate it. Like painting green, you know, it seems silly, but oh sweet mercy, it was good. I enjoyed it. I, I'd say out of everything I've painted for this video, this was the one I had the most fun with. And it's just hot glue on a base with some agrellin earth. Like you think there's there's nothing to it. But oh, it was good. All right, let's do a smoke effect. You you can see where this is going. It's cotton wool. It's cotton wool stuck to a base. We don't really need... You don't need me to explain this, do you? Do you? Do you, do you really need me to spoon feed this to you? So PVA glue onto a template. Once that's in place, get your cotton wool and stick it on top. Sand and PVA around the sides, and then you're ready to move on. Like... I, I, I mean, for myself, I hadn't made one of these before. So if you've never done anything, the first time it can be a bit tough. But that applies to everything in life. That doesn't just apply to Gaslands templates. So, you know, what can I say, guys? Painting it was an experience. I can't say I've ever really spray painted um, cotton wool before. But uh, it works really, you know, it looks good. It's got that kind of dusty, smoky look to it, which I suppose you want with smoke. But it's it's a darker, darker smoke. Like you, It's kind of like you ever see those live shows and maybe the, uh, the cars will have like some coloured smoke coming out behind them. It's got that kind of feel to it. Okay, no messing around now. It's time to do napalm. So let's use lots of different materials for this one. So yes, we're starting off with a hot glue gun. And I wanted to try and make some kind of... Because the whole thing with napalm is it's not just like boiling oil thrown on a surface. It's, it's a real horrible viscous liquid that just continues to burn and, and suck up oxygen and just like it, it's impossible to remove it. It's real, real horrible stuff, napalm. Um, so I thought, well, okay, you got that oily, you know, gooey texture at the base. But what can we do for the fire? Now, I'm sure I've seen online before, so if you came up with this, credit to you, I'm sure I've seen online someone using tin foil to make a f like the, the heart of the fire effect. So I just got some tin foil, hot glued it in place. You know, gave it a bit of a twist first. And then carried on. So once the tin foil flames, as it were, are in place, the next step clearly, is to put some cotton wool on it, and then, once the sand's in place, get to painting. And, you know, for my first ever napalm effect, I mean, I thought, honestly, it would look a bit better than it does. But it's readable at a distance, and I think that's the biggest, biggest challenge with Gaslands templates. You know, you don't want it to be some sort of murky, oh, what is it? From a distance, that reads as fire. It doesn't read as glue or it doesn't read as like an oil slick that reads as fire it's red it's got glowing embers fire all right so let's move on to everything in the post paint category so what is post paint well we're going to base the the bases <laughs> we're going to base the templates with sawdust paint the sawdust and then all of these techniques will get glued on top as i said at the beginning of the video so everything that we're doing from this point on, it's all happening afterwards rather than happening before. And again, like I said, I did I did this at the same time as I was doing all my other templates, because otherwise this video would just take forever logistically to make. So in terms of using sawdust over sand, I'm, I'm going to use sand from now on. Now, I did try a couple of things out. In this case... After I put down a layer of like beige paint mixed with PVA to, you know, sort of harden the, the sawdust, I tried using some black wash just to bring a bit of shadow to the base. Yeah, uh, black wash really just kind of soaks in there and just completely changes it. Like this looks more like some something from city fight terrain. So I had to get a bit of towel and sort of soak that up. I then figured, well, 
if the black wash is no good, let's make a brown wash. I use some craft store brown paint, some water, and some washing up liquid, just a couple of drops, and there you go. There's a brown wash. You know, it's a very diluted mix. Like you, you're barely using any paint compared to how much water is in there, but you only want a couple of drops of washing up liquid. And it went on pretty good. You know, I, I think this worked out all right. I think this is the big problem with with washes and trying to make templates and terrain using cardboard. It can be such a porous material that it'll just soak up anything you put on there, even after like a layer of PVA glue or anything like that. Now to try and bring this back to a beige colour, I use some Ushabti bone from GW, you know, bleach bone. Naturally, you can barely see it in the video, <laughs> but trust me, it's there. So let's look at cow traps. All right, so let's look at something that I like to think I've pioneered today, and that's broken glass being used as cow traps. So my logic is bulletproof glass is pretty strong, and I know for a fact that I wouldn't want to drive my car through that. So maybe it wouldn't shred your tires, but it would still mess things up. So where are we going to get this glass-like material? Well, we're going to need a burger, of course, because it's not the burger that we want. You know, we're going to we're going to take that out. We're going to have that later. Of course, it's not the burger that we want. <laughs> what kind of YouTube video do you think this is? <laughs> no, I ended up having that for my lunch that day. It was great. <laughs> Living in isolation, eating burgers. No, what we want is the plastic packaging because it's clear for the most part. It's a clear plastic pallet packaging that's got quite a good bit of thickness. Of course, if you've got miniatures that come in blister packs, you can just use those. So the key is, cut it up into little bladey, sort of triangular, trapezoid looking bits. And then once you've put some super glue on your post-painted base, just sprinkle some of the quote-unquote glass shards on there. And the idea is you're trying to create this effect where it's not like a single pane of glass has been broken. No, no, no. They would have had like a container on the back of the car filled with just horrible, horrible broken glass shards, like big chunky bits of like bulletproof glass that's all poured out onto the road. To help make this look a bit better, I decided to use a bit of good old Norn Oil liquid talent to put a bit of shadow in between the different shards. And then after that had dried, I put a few more shards on top, but angled them upwards to really look like they'd catch it if you drove over them. But i got to say, I'm really happy with how these turned out. Like, oh, if the nuclear glue effect is my favourite thing to paint, this was my favourite thing to model because it looks so good. And from a distance, you can tell, like, I don't want my car to go over that because it's going to mess it up. Especially if you're playing a game with, like, bikers in it. Oh, could you imagine falling off a bike in real life into a big, like, pool of just broken glass? It'd be horrendous. But the good news is this glass is safe because it's made from plastic. But yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. So the next cow trop trick is a super simple one. I've seen this posted a couple of places in Gaslands with variations. First and foremost by Jake Zettelmeyer, um, using sort of aluminum mesh, but also Vincent Bernard showed something fairly similar. Um, but rather than do what those guys did, which was taking, you know, the mesh and trying to make individual caltrops, I figured I'd try and go for like almost like a razor wire effect where I'd cut off these long thin strips and then like double them back on themselves. And while yes, this is super quick and easy to do, it doesn't look that great when it's glued to the base. Now, I don't know if this was just me, like, or it could just be the color of the base, but they are just super hard to see on there. But I figured, you know what, I'm making this video Let's show you guys, you know, the effect that I was able to create. You know, and I tried, you know, I don't I don't just e easily give up with these things, as you all know. You know, I, I put a bit of Norn Oil on there to put a bit of shadow, but it just doesn't read well from a distance. And they're just, 
it's just not not as as clear i mean compared to the glass one that we just did or any of the ones from the start okay maybe not so much the uh the sprue one but this last cow trop trick um i swear i've seen on the gaslands facebook page but for the life of me i could not find the person that posted it so i am so sorry i i searched i searched for like a solid 20 20 minutes half an hour trying to find this post i was looking back as far back as like 2016 trying to find this thing all variations of cow trop and spikes and dropped spot you name it but what we're basically doing Take a bit of black card, paint it silver on both sides. We're going to cut out these little thin strips, you know, about, about a mil, mil and a half in, in width. What we're going to make is this shape that is is kind of like a diamond. It's it's almost like that cool S you would have drawn when you were at school. And then once you've got, got a whole bunch of those, we're going to fold them over and then glue them back to back very similar to what we did with the plasticard uh, cow trops right at the start of this video. So I tried a couple of variations because I, at the time I was I was making these I was like I won't I won't look at what the other guy did you know I wanted to see if I can go off memory alone and then editing this video I cannot find the guy so if you're the guy a this is a fantastic technique and b I am so sorry I can't name you because you pioneered something really good here so you know who you are because they're so easy to make and they're really effective look at that little little card caltrops look how easy that is and you know they're not the strongest thing in the world but they go on the base easy enough and they're pretty easy to make and if these got damaged it's like a no-brainer just like make some more and glue them down i mean you could even do this out of plastic card because there's plastic card out there that comes in like really thin like paper-like amounts all right last last few tricks now so doing glue on a base yeah yeah it's it's just hot glue on a base i mean what I ch I'll, I'll, at the end of the video, you'll see the failures, right? And this one almost was a failure because it doesn't look great. But I found if you put a bit of black wash around the edges, it kind of helps put a bit of life in it. Because don't get me wrong, it's got some good things going for it. And at a distance, you do read it as glue. It's just not that impressive. But it's got a good shine to it. And you can see through it, which is pretty neat. It's just at the end of the day hot glue on a template so it is what it is <laughs> oh dear but we're down to the very last techniques now so you know if you're still watching at this point you know well done <laughs> all right smoke you know you you've seen me do smoke a minute ago you know how easy this is you don't need me to explain this it's it's just some pva glue and then you know good old-fashioned cotton wool stuck on there and uh, you know, I sprayed it a bit at a distance with some some black spray paint, and I even used a bit of um, sealant, a bit of the old uh, hard coat from GW. You know, just to stiffen the wool a bit, but it doesn't need explaining. All right, let's look at failures. Let's look at the things that didn't work. So first things first, I tried to do an oil or glue effect where I'd, I'm sure I'm sure I've seen this online or I've done this myself before where you use PVA glue, glob that onto a surface, let it dry and it will dry clear, but you'll get this sort of semi watery surface that you can then work on. Um, yeah, it worked. I just didn't like it. I mean, it's just it dried really thin. Like here it looks nice and thick, but at the same time, like white, but it dried super thin and super clear and I was just like it, it'll take more time than it's worth the next trick this was going to be an alternative for making the napalm template using plastic bags and I know I've seen other youtubers use plastic bags in like challenges and junky trash bash builds but oh man it was not a solid choice for this one it just it, it it'll stick on the base but only just and I, I was looking at it I was like it, it's not worth me trying to paint this I might finish it at some point but nah it's no good 
But all right, here we are at the end of the video. And, you know, I don't think it matters if your wasteland is a bright, colourful one or if your wasteland is a dark, gritty, Mad Max apocalypse. At the end of the day, we're all here to have fun. And I think a big part of that is having the visual elements that really put the game together. And there's nothing quite like having a 3D textured template to really bring life to your game. You know, because I, I like the templates that, that are available that are just like clear acrylic, but there's something about having something that almost tells a little bit of a story. Like, you know, you can create scenarios very easily with this stuff. But that brings this video to the end. Thank you guys for watching so much. Uh, this didn't take long to record it didn't take long to edit but that's because i'm in quarantine right now um i can't thank you guys enough for all the support you're giving and you know commenting on my videos and liking things and it's good it feels good um but let's spread the love around i mean i've got the patreon coming i'm still working on that but you guys seemed you know pretty eager about that so you know i'm still still working on it but just before I go, I should talk about something brand new that V2A are putting together that's coming out every Saturday and Wednesday night at 9pm, and that is the V2A Emergency Broadcast System. And this is a podcast slash music event. Like I say, they're doing it every Saturday, every Wednesday at 9pm. And it's pretty sick. They're going to be interviewing some amazing guests. And at some point, I might be one of them, you know, doing a bit of a Q&A. So you guys need to check this out. All right, guys. And I will see you all in the next episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as I said, check out my sister's store. That would be really cool. All right. Thank you. And goodbye, Wasteland.